تعجل بالقرآن من قبل أن يقضى إليك وحيه وقل رب زدني علما As always, as the Sheikh mentions, the fawaid min al al-maslakiyya. And the scholars, they do this as we've said, when you learn the names and attributes of Allah, you learn the details, you learn the evidences, you learn what we affirm, what we do not, you learn all of the actual core of the subject. But then there is one point at the end, which is always... What is the benefit you get from knowing that, for example, Allah is in front of you when you pray? Now we know that and we affirm that and it's in the hadith. But what benefit do you get from knowing that? This is what they call, the shaykh calls it an nahiya al-maslakiyya. That what do you benefit from knowing that Allah is ar-Rahman? What do you benefit from knowing that Allah is Al-Ghafoor? What do you benefit from knowing Allah is Al-Sami' Al-Basir? What do you know from benefiting that Allah is before you when you pray? He says what you benefit is Al-Adab Ma'Allah Azza wa Jal. That you will then have good etiquette with your Lord. And that when the person who's praying believes and understands and has certainty that Allah is before you when you pray, then he will certainly pray with a far greater level of khushu' with that subservience and that humility and that focus in his prayer, that submission in his prayer and haybah min Allah azza wa jal and having that reverence and that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why in the hadith it mentions people they pray, but a person may come out of his prayer with maybe only a tenth of the reward. Why only a tenth of the reward, only 10%? Where's the rest of the reward gone? It is all based upon your level of khushu' in the prayer. A person may pray, as a Shaykh al mentions elsewhere, some people they pray in, uh, in the Arabic, I think he mentioned something like automatic, that you pray like a robot. A person just comes and does the movements. He's not even thinking where he is, what he's doing. Here's the Imam, Allahu Akbar. Here's the Imam, Allahu Akbar, moves. He's thinking, his mind is somewhere else. He's not even in Sheffield. His mind, mashallah, may be in Yemen thinking about something. And then the Imam says, Sami'allahu liman hamidah. It just comes like a button. Ah, stand up. Sami'allahu liman hamidah. Allahu Akbar, like a button. Ah, khalas, sujood. He just moves like he would press a button on something and it moves. His mind, his heart is somewhere else. Not even in the mosque. His heart and his mind are not even in the mosque. As Shaykh al said, people who pray like that in this automatic way, in this automatic way, press the button up, down, up, down. Your mind is somewhere else completely. You're not going to come out of the prayer with the benefit. In the Quran, when it tells us the prayer prohibits from al-fahsha and munkar, but that's only going to occur for the one who prays with his body and his mind and heart and focus and submission. If you pray in this automatic way, without your mind, without focus, without anything, then you have done the physical movements and your prayer is valid. But in terms of what you've benefited from it, it will be minimal if it's like that. And this is especially important for what is coming up now for the month of Ramadan and the prayer, the extra prayer that many will pray, the Salat al-Taraweeh. As Shaykh al mentioned, Salat al-Taraweeh, it is not a countdown. How the people, all they do in their mind, they are counting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa Alhamdulillah, that's two. And then the next one finishes, that's four. Next one finishes, 
Akhi, was that four or six? Six, ah, six, alhamdulillah. Next one finishes now, eight. Now we can get out. The Shaykh said, do not pray in the taraweeh as though it is a countdown. Two finished, four finished, six finished, eight finished. You're just thinking about how many you finished so you can leave. A person who prays in that kind of manner, then what are your, where is your benefit you're going to gain from this ibadah, from this worship? Where is the implementation of the hadith? Man qama Ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambih. Whoever prays with iman, with certainty and belief in Allah, certainty and belief and yaqeen, iman, praying and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, ihtisaban, hoping and desiring for the reward from Allah. That is the one whose previous sins are all forgiven. As for the one who comes in, up, down, up, down, with no focus, no understanding, no nothing, then that person is not going to benefit from his prayer like the one who focuses. And so, those affairs are important for a believer to ponder over. And so here the Shaykh says, a person who recognizes this, recognizes that Allah is before you when you pray, then certainly he's going to pray in a far, far better way, with far more submission and humility and sincerity, knowing that Allah is before him, than a person who has nothing in his mind, no focus, no nothing. 